everything you need to know about OpenAI Dev Day. What all the things that OpenAI launched, what are the new things that you will learn in this video. Let's get started. The first thing that I wanted to show is they actually flexed their Microsoft partnership. And at the end of this conversation, you would hear Sam Altman saying, let's build AGI together. So I just wanted to start the video from that. They just wanted to, you know, flex their Microsoft branding. Anyways, that's that's part of the corporate branding. First of all, OpenAI launched a new model called GPT-4 Turbo. And this model has got 128,000 context window. We all know that 128,000 context window is not surprising, but pulling it off in a production setup is quite surprising. It is. It would be really interesting to see what kind of latency it brings in. But anyways, they've got GPT-4 Turbo with 128,000 context window. That is three times cheaper than GPT-4 for input tokens and two times cheaper than um, the GPT-4 for output tokens. And the updated pricing is available for you here. So that's the first thing that you need to know about OpenAI Dev Day. So there is a function calling update which lets you call multiple functions from OpenAI responses. So you can call multiple functions and uh, even for you to get a JSON object, there is a consistent JSON object. Like you have a response format, you can specify JSON and you would always get JSON like OpenAI is assuring you that you will always get JSON. And then they have also added a new seed parameter, which is almost like there in any machine learning algorithm. But now OpenAI has decided to add this so that developers can get consistent reproducible output. So whenever you want the same response from GPT-4 Turbo or any other OpenAI model, then you can enable the seed parameter and use the same seed value that you use. For example, 42 is the seed value that you use. You can use the same seed value again to get a consistent reproducible output. So OpenAI has introduced something called an assistant and you will have a working assistant to be embedded on your website. As simple as that, the assistant can have the three important things that OpenAI promises code interpreter. That means it can have a Python interpreter running on a sandbox retrieval. That means you can upload a PDF and ask questions. And finally, it can also have function calling. That means from the assistant, you can also call APIs and give a response back to the user. It's very impressive what they showed in the demo. And uh, it's also impressive that they make it so easy for you to deploy a chatbot. This also ultimately kills a lot of uh, websites, a lot of SaaS businesses, micro SaaS businesses that were offering uh, like a chatbot within your website using OpenAI API. But now building an assistant should be as simple as possible. And that's what OpenAI says. And again, the assistant itself is impressive. But the fact that you have got code interpreter that can understand your question, whether you are asking for calculation and do Python internally and a retrieval, upload a PDF and get a question and answer back and function calling is super impressive and it will be available in Assistant Playground. And then OpenAI has launched new modalities. That means now API is available for GPT-4 vision. API is available for DALI-3. So this is like input vision, output DALI-3, and they have got a new text-to-speech -to API. So it's of course, like we predicted, OpenAI is coming for 11 labs. And you can go ahead and then see the uh, voice. They've got six distinct different voice. And they have also given you some options to build something that they call custom model. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be only for like the rich, big companies who want to build their own custom models. OpenAI will work closely with those companies, with OpenAI engineers working at every single step of building their own custom model. So this is something that OpenAI calls it custom model. It's going to be a very limited one, probably like the big banks of the world are probably going to use it. So interested organizations can apply here. But the most important thing if you care about OpenAI pricing is that the pricing is going to be cheaper. As we already know, GPT-4 Turbo is three times cheaper. GPT-4 than GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo also has become cheaper and the fine tuning of GPT-3.5 Turbo 4K model has also become cheaper. So technically all the models have become cheaper. The important thing, like I said, assistance API has got a uh, different pricing when you have got a code interpreter, when you have got retrieval and you can see all the other pricing that is available. The interesting thing that OpenAI announced today is something that they call copyright shield. So if you use OpenAI product and uh, somebody decides to sue you saying like, Hey, why are you using OpenAI chatbot, which has violated copyrights and you are outputting, let's say Harry Potter text. Like you can ask OpenAI chat GPT to talk 
uh, in the style of let's say Harry Potter. So somebody might like J.K. Rowling might decide to sue you. In that case, should that case arise, OpenAI will protect you like the customers pay for your legal fees and all the other things. And that's what they call us copyright shield. In terms of open source, they have released the Whisper Large V3. This is like the new version of Whisper IASR and they ha also had like a demo online like um, live where uh, the head of developer relations of OpenAI took voice commands and in real time translated into text and then sent it to something called GPTs which we'll see quickly. So that was quite impressive. So we have got a new Whisper Large V3 model. So previously we had a Whisper Large V2. So now we have got Whisper Large V3 and that model is also updated in the release. So if you want to use the latest Whisper, the large one, you can go ahead directly use it. The most revolutionary thing for me is something that they call GPTs. To be honest, terrible name. Um, I, I was just joking that uh, if you thought advanced data analysis was a terrible name for code interpreter, GPTs, it's much terrible name. Maybe they used it because they've got the copyrights. Anyways, the GPTs, what they're calling GPTs here is agents. You can create your own agents. You don't even have to code it. All you need to do is, you, you know, you can use natural language like chat and then have agents and have the agents deployed. They had some impressive demos and uh, they are going to have like an agent store or GPT store quite like an app store, like in the interface also look like an app store. And they also probably will have a revenue sharing model in the future. So if uh, your GPTs, your GPTs, your GPTs are going to be super popular. Everybody loves it. Everybody wants to use it. OpenAI will share some part of revenue with you. It's not very clear about what kind of revenue they're going to share. Is it like Apple? They're going to take a cart, no, no information. But right now you can create GPTs which is again, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I cannot say the name, but anyways, you can create GPT agents that can be private only for you, that can be public for anybody, that can be enterprise specific for your company or something that you can deploy it on GPT store, which will come um, later this month. And uh, building GPTs are uh, super easy. The demos that you saw, it's uh, amazing. And they've got like a lot of different integration starting from internet, function calling and uh, they also had like a demo with Zapier where you can send a message, connect it to your calendar, read it through Zapier, send a message on Slack. I mean, the integration is quite amazing. I think this is also going to kill a bunch of startups that have managed to build like an agent interface on top of GPT-4, GPT-3.5 APIs. So anyways, these are all the updates that OpenAI made today. I wanted to keep it less than 10 minutes. We'll have a detailed video later on. See you in another video. Happy prompting.